Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Sumioni Demon Arts. This originally came out around the launch window of the Vita. It didn't come out in the first wave of games, but it came out really, really close after. So, this is uh, definitely a better late than never. I wanted to do at least one today, so I didn't feel like I was wasting my time. So, away we go. I'm going to have to load my data in first, because this game's way of loading and saving data is really freaking weird, and I don't know why. But we've loaded the game in, so now we can go have a look at everything else. Your controls menu is literally everything they tell you in the tutorial. I will go to the benefit of explaining that all for you while we're playing the game. And you can come here to change your controls and stuff. And there's not that much in the way of... There's, there's not that much in the way of... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Of control options. It's, it's a little weird, the options that you have. Especially considering the game's control scheme is an absolute nightmare at times. But we'll work with it. You can come here to rankings to check your scores on the individual stages, but even despite the fact that I've done a fair few of these stages already, it still won't actually mark my score, and I don't know why. I'm not entirely sure what the deal is there. Maybe I have to go through the individual stages twice. And, of course, we have a gallery for art and music and stuff, but the art and the music in this game aren't very good. We can actually play um, some of the events, and we'll, we'll end up playing some of the events as we start the game up. But, yeah, none of it's really that good. It's It's got this whole, like, ancient japanese feel to it, but it feels generic as hell. Like, really, really generic, with no interesting twists or spins on it, so it just feels quite dull. But, enough of my talking, he says, stroking his beard. Uh, let's just get on into the game itself. Now, the game takes about five minutes to scroll through this whole text scroll to tell you the whole basic gist of the plot. And it feels like 30, so I'm gonna be as quick as possible in explaining the plot so that you understand what it is, because seriously, the writing here is not very good at all. Uh, the idea is, you've got these two guys here, they're good people, they make, um, they, they're good people, they get thrown in jail by two corrupt people. One of the corrupt people summons a god to eat the other corrupt person for turning on him, and this god just runs rampant and kills everything that it can, and our goal is to basically get past all of the corrupt people's men in order to get to this god and basically destroy it via the use of the, um, by the use of, of two gods and a demon that they sacrifice their lives to summon. That's it. Uh, there is some in-between stage events as well, but it, it, it's really not worth digging into that much. So, here's the drill. This is a platformer with a couple of weird things going on about it. We move with the left analog stick, we can, or the D-pad, depending on what you feel like. We can attack using the square button. And we can also lay down ink using the touchscreen, and ink can be used as platforms. And if you're on the platforms long enough, you will start to gain power. And once you've gained enough power, you will do stronger attacks. So now that I've gone red, I have the maximum amount of power, and I'm just beating the shit out of this tower. That's generally how this works. This tower comes up as a boss in like half of the stages of the game, so... Get used to it. They add more attacks and stuff to it later on, but there's... It's not really... It's not, it's not really that great or varied or anything like that. Throughout the stages, you can grab those little orbs, the green ones and the uncolored ones, and they will give you extra... They'll give you extra health and extra brush meter, because you have a limited amount of brush. You can also do some other things with the brush, which I'll try to show in this next stage. The setting sun. Alright, let's go. God damn it, go away. Jump over that. Okay, so there is a water mode for the brush, and what the water mode of the brush can do is if you have it turned on by pressing circle, it'll let you wipe away your platforms, and it'll also let you, um, what's the word? It'll let you wipe away your platforms, and you're also able to use it to to block certain projectiles. 
Oh, damn it. Now, if you hit the L button, you can do a few extra things as well. You can do lines while you hit the L button, and that makes fire. And if you hold it down... Oh, hang on. i got to get some back. If you hold it down, you'll create a lightning cloud, which will, of course, do a lightning bolt. Which doesn't actually do much damage in comparison to fire, so I don't entirely know why it's there. You might as well just do fire the entire time. As you can see, I kind of screwed up with my fire there, so... You can disable certain elements of the tower by hitting them enough. As you can see, I've taken out one of the archer platforms. But later on, the towers get absolutely ridiculous just due to how much hit points they have for absolutely everything. It takes an age to successfully kill them off. And this is a game where getting high ratings relies on your... Not only how little damage you take, but how much time you take. So it's surprisingly frustrating trying to get something like this done. Not to mention, with the amount of obstacles they throw at you, some of the towers get extremely hard to defeat in, under the best circumstances. Like, the amount of just outright dead zones that the that the damn things have is just ridiculous. And by dead zone, I mean areas that you can't stand because you are guaranteed to take a hit and die, like I just did. So we're going to have to retry. You do also have the option to redo every stage. That's kind of relevant. So let's try this again. I hate these fucking battles. I'll just, I'll just go full ham on it this time. Notably, you do not have a block button. I guess you're supposed to, like... You're supposed to try and use the water brush in order to successfully, um, in order to successfully deflect some projectiles, but some projectiles you can't, just can't deflect that way. Which means you have to find some way to get out of the way, which means you have to jump, but of course there's a bunch of other stuff going on in the background and you can't take care of that while you're working on everything else at once and it's just fantastic. The control scheme in this game feels like you need three fucking hands in order to use it properly and it's just... It is literally retarded. I can't think of a better way to describe it other than it's just literally retarded. Thankfully you can summon gods though. However, even these guys don't do much damage in the grand scheme of things. I mean, they're doing massive amounts of damage now, but they do nowhere near this level of damage. When, um, they do nowhere near this level of damage. And they take up ink power as well, and you need to get your ink power back. So there are, there are ink pots that you can get to replenish your ink stock. But the default way to get your ink back is to rub the rear touchpad. And you get very little ink back, as you do, so... It just gets more and more frustrating the more you go on, because everything starts to take more damage, but you don't get any stronger. So you can't really do anything about the fact that there's an absolute flippin' ton of health on this one bloody boss. You just have to stand there and try and hit away at it, and you eventually get tons of these damn... Tons of these damn towers with massive amounts of things coming off them. And you're screwed. Just like I am, because... Considering that I didn't get a high enough rank... On that stage... I now have to continue on this particular branch. And this is an escape from large foe stage. So to continue on this particular branch, we have to just... We, we have to keep going now. And here's the problem with having to keep going. Due to the way the game works, you can't go and select any particular stage. So you have to run through the game several times in order to get the game's best ending. And if you screw up once on the stages where you are absolutely required to get a perfect score, you will have to save scum to try the stage again. That's the only way around it. You can't do anything else except save scum 
in order to get multiple tries at a stage. And with the control scheme being as annoying as it is, it hurts your hands to play it for longer than a few minutes at a time because you have to keep your hands on the X and square buttons in order to jump properly, but you also need to be rubbing the rear touchpad to get all your to get all your energy back. You also need to be you also need to be using the touchscreen in order to you also need to be using the touchscreen to draw all the ink that's required in order to actually hurt people or at least get close to them in stages like this where you literally just have to where you literally have to build platforms up on, on up towards the goal and then you have to keep a hand on the d-pad to let you move it feels like you need three hands to play this game effectively it's really strange to how they decided to go with this weird control scheme and it just hurts and it feels like I'm missing a lot of things as well, like, um, you only get one attack. I mean, you can combine this, I mean, you do have a dash attack like this, but there is no point in using it more than... There's no point in using it in any more than just, like, getting attacked in on a, one of those smaller wooden towers. Just because there doesn't really seem to be doesn't really seem to be any point to it because you're just going to take damage anyway, so... It's just really annoying. And since you don't seem to do any sort of, like, leveling up or unlocking of new techniques or anything, it just gets duller and duller by the second. It just... Like, this stage here, it doesn't really feel like there's anything I can do then stand around here and just try and beat the shit out of the tower from this far away while while guarding my guard dog. That's all that really feels relevant in this game. And also now that he's been knocked back, he's going to fire off his super beam and it's nowhere near the tower, so it's not going to do any damage to it because fuck everything. So the combination of Controls that require four hands to use effectively, combined with the fact that you have to replay the game over and over, and just the general boredom of not being able to level up or unlock any special attacks or anything in the way to actually make this more interesting, makes this a really dull game. It is honestly one of the dullest games I've played in a while. I remember actually playing this for like two minutes back when I originally got it, and I was like, oh, why did I stop playing that? And then I played it, and I'm like, oh, I remember. stage I needed to get the high score on in order not to get to the worst ending in the game. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was. So now I'm stuck on the worst ending. Sometimes it just feels like luck. Like, where the hell did that arrow come from? Holy shit. really does feel like luck sometimes, whether you actually stand a chance of getting a good score or not. There's also that problem with the game's gameplay just being really unsatisfying. Just, it feels like you're swinging your weapons right through them. It doesn't really seem to... It, it just... It doesn't feel like it's making any sort of impact. It feels like I'm just swinging my sword at thin air and everything's just happening to die in the meantime. Also, I've noticed is that if you go off screen, it actually stops stuff that's going on off screen. Sometimes it's it's weird. It's kind of uh, picky and choosy about how it works. We got one more stage and that will let me see the that will let me see the big boss and I have seen this boss again in a later area and it just has a absolute ton of health and it's just a uh, uh no 
I, I'm really not looking forward to fighting this boss. This boss is just retarded. And of course, I have to get through this bloody cavalcade of shit in order to actually get there. Fucking hell. Oh yeah, I remember. I actually have to beat these guys, don't I? Okay, all the fire there, some fire there. Just get that out of the sky there. And this is the boss. The problem with this boss is it, ha is it has a ton of health, so you just end up just hacking away at it like crazy. Running away, trying to get your ink back, and it's just, it, it's not enjoyable. It's not an enjoyable boss fight in the slightest. It's, it's not even close to other hack and slash games of this sort of, sort of design. It's just not fun. That's, that's just all there is to it. It's just, it's really unenjoyable. Surprisingly unenjoyable, actually. Like, I, I'm literally better off just... Why am I... Why am I... I was about to say, why am I not doing anything with the water? The water should have been working just fine. Also, you have to be standing still in order to get your bloody, um... In order to get your health back. Not your health back, your, um, your ink back. So, have fun with that. Also, I'm pretty sure the damn thing's invisible. Not invisible, invincible. While you um while it's swapping to its second phase, so I only got one phase out of that, and the damn thing's got three because of course it does. So I have to wait for the I have to wait for the um let's say I have to wait for the damn thing to recover. So how I'm playing this is I've got my left hand's pointer finger on the screen, swiping away the stuff while I've got my oh jeez. Well, well, I've got my right hand on the thing, and I'm going to have to bring my left hand back over to move if I want to move, or... Uh, it's, it's just a really painful system. I don't understand why they thought this was a good idea. Like, did someone legitimately play this and think, Oh, my hands don't hurt. This will be absolutely fine. Also, that it's about to let off a gigantic beam, and I'm going to... Well, I'm not going to die from it. But I, I did indeed take a massive hit there, despite being very clearly out of the way of it. Fuck this boss. I'm just... Fuck this boss. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm not doing that again. I hate this game. I hate this game. It's... It's got absolutely no variety. It requires you to run through it multiple times with only one chance to get to a lower branch. Well, actually, no, there's a couple of chances sometimes, but still, you get, like, one chance to go to the lower branches most of the time. And the combat isn't fun. It feels like you need four hands to make it work properly. And the presentation is just nowhere near top-notch. It's a pretty bad game. From Acquire, and I recently did a Akiba's Beat video, so it just kind of feels like I've come full circle. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.